stuff here walking out to the chicken coop and you may notice that the front of the fence line looks a little odd and that's because what you see are my fence extensions that I am putting on the yard let's um let's let the chickens out the chickens have been spending uh, much more time in their run than they're used to or that they're happy with and that's all because of the coyote attack that you saw at the beginning of this video. We had a coyote that um, came in, jumped the back fence, grabbed Georgie, our one chicken, jumped the fence again with, with the chicken in its mouth, and jumped the back fence as well. So it jumped two four-foot fences in and out and uh, didn't have so much trouble doing so. So this is going to be my answer to that problem and uh, just wanted to talk about it a little bit. So we've had the chickens for, I don't know, between five and six years, I guess. And over that time period, you know, we've gotten hundreds, if not thousands of eggs, which is nice. Um, but I've also easily spent well into the five figures number on uh, anything and everything chicken related. It's kind of crazy. And I've never, I've never gone back and added up all of the various expenses I've, uh, I've incurred due to chicken ownership. And uh, I don't think I ever will, <laughs> to be honest with you. You can see um, over here to the side, I don't know how much you can see in the camera, but this is my latest addition. Uh, once we decided that we were gonna um, keep the chickens in here, mostly I built a back door basically which leads to a tunnel which we have connected to our chicken our urban chicken tractor back there uh, they don't use it a whole lot but uh, it is an option for them so anyways this this latest um, coyote attack was not the first time it's happened the first time was probably three years ago or so uh, on on um, film we had uh, much the same Although we didn't have the inner chicken fence when that happened, we just had the outer fence, but the coyote jumped the fence, sprinted in towards the chicken area here, grabbed the chicken, ran back, and um, jumped the fence again with the chicken in its mouth. We also mysteriously, at the time mysteriously, lost a chicken last year, Steffi, who was one of my favorites. I loved her very much. She just disappeared one morning, very early in the morning. I came out to do stuff out here, probably no later than 7.30, and she was missing. And there was no sign of her whatsoever. There was no feathers, there was no blood. Um, we had no, because during that first attack, there was feathers and there was blood. Nothing on that second attack. And we really did not know what happened to her. We didn't know if a, a, a hawk or an eagle came in and grabbed her. We just, we did not know. But after seeing the, and unfortunately the, um, the DVR, the security DVR, another thing that I bought, uh, wasn't recording properly at that time. So I didn't have any surveillance footage to, to check. But after watching this last attack on the, um, on the DVR, because I did capture that, the coyote was in and out of the yard in less than 10 seconds. I mean, it was, it was crazy. And there were no feathers from the attack. There were no uh, signs of struggle. So I'm 99.9% .9 sure that um, uh, when we lost Steffi, that was to a coyote as well. So if someone was, was to ask me if I thought it was worth it to have chickens, um, and I knew that they were kind of like me, like they really cared about the animals, you know, because um, all of our chickens have names. They're, they're basically our pets. And uh, when I combine all the money that was spent uh, divided by the amount of eggs that we've, we've gotten. And then the, um, the emotional hardship whenever we lose a, a bird. I mean, I, I hate it. I mean, we've had them die from illness and from predators. And we've probably had 10 chickens die maybe, you know, from one way or the other. It's very, it's very sad for me. And um, 
In, in a nutshell, I would not recommend someone have chickens if you are like me. Uh, it's just uh, the, the cost to benefit ratio I do not think works out. This is my new Husqvarna yard tractor. I'm gonna be doing a review on this at some point as well, whenever I get time. I'm not sure when that'll be. So after that chicken attack, the last chicken attack happened, I wasted, and I saw it on video exactly what happened. I wasted very little time until I hopped on the internet and looked at solutions. Because coyotes are very good jumpers. I've heard my fence is a four foot fence and uh, as you saw in the video, he, he or she cleared that very easily. Um, I have read that coyotes can jump up to six feet, which is about right up to here on me. So I needed to find something that would prevent them from doing that. And this is what I'm going to be trying to do. This is, uh, these are four foot fence extensions. I got them from a website called Deer Busters. They're actually, um, their primary focus is for to keep deer out, which are also very good jumpers. Uh, but it was mentioned as also being a solution for coyotes. So that's the avenue that I'm taking. I have a whole bunch of these poles. I have more than I need. I have three quarters of the perimeter of the fence already. Um, I have these attached already. So I'm gonna to try to attach the last side tonight. And then tomorrow we will uh, work on attaching this fencing, which is going to connect to it. And the end result should be, we have eight feet. I can't see the top of my hand, but we should have eight feet of fencing around the chicken yard, which even the most athletic coyote should not be able to jump. So we'll have the fencing attached to the extensions and then it'll also be attached at the bottom to the existing fence, just to make sure that there's no holes in the uh, protection. So I ordered, this stuff is not cheap. I ordered three of the 100 foot kits. So each kit includes 16 poles and 100 feet of fence and fasteners and, uh, and these heavy duty zip ties and these little caps that are put in the bottom of the, of the uh, poles, I guess for, I don't know, for, uh, water protection i guess maybe and also a bunch of screws now these screws are kind of worthless to me you see how short and small they are i immediately decided to go out and get my own three inch wood screws heavy duty wood screws with fender washers part of the reason for that is if you look at the surface they didn't really have a bracket that was uh, specifically designed for round wooden posts they had metal ones that were designed for metal fences. They had ones that were um, designed for split rail fences, and that's what I got. But nothing really for um, conventional wooden posts, at least that I saw. So what I've been doing to make this uh, work is I'm, most, I'm only attaching it with these two holes here. And I'm putting them right in the center of the post so they're in the thickest, meatiest part of the, of the post. So I'm only using two holes uh, per extension, but it feels, it feels very, very solid when I'm done. So I think we should be okay. So I've just been working out of the wheelbarrow here. I just move it from post to post. I have the tools that I need in the wheelbarrow. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, okay, here's my fender washers, good. So in addition to this fencing, I also spent another $200 last, yeah, last weekend. I have a bunch of ring devices on my house. Like right there, you'll see a, there's a ring stick up cam on the front of the coupe. I bought a, a ring, a wireless and, and a battery powered ring spotlight cam as well, which is, you can't see it because the solar's in the way, but it's in that back corner and it shoots down that back fence line. And that is so we get a, a heads up if uh, a coyote is, is pacing that, that uh, fence line because they typically will do that first. They will kind of pace to, you know, survey the situation before they come in. So the, um, the ring cam hopefully gives us a heads up a bit, uh, about that. Okay, so what I've been doing is I line up the top of the bracket right, right about the top of the fence line. Um, the reason I do that is it'll give me lots of overlap that I can connect the, the fencing down low here. And I can also wrap around here and connect the pole if I had to, not sure. So I, I drop a, a pilot hole in, put the first screw in, snug it up and not tighten it all the way. And then I, I level it for left and right 
I can't level it in and out because these poles are, are very bendy. I can't level it that way, so it's fine. It's not meant to be beautiful, it's meant to be functional. So I have it level, so I'll drop another small pilot hole. And I'm dropping them on the ground like a dummy, okay. All right, so here's my three inch wood screws. Put the fender washer on there. Just get it snug. Make sure my level is still kind of there. That looks good. And then I will install it the rest of the way. Okay, good and solid. And that's it, that's, that's, that is the install process uh, for the post, pretty easy. That's what it looks like when I'm done. So these line posts are, are smaller diameter than the corner post, so it's 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 even more important to uh, make sure you're you're hitting the center of it here with your with your screws. Cindy's out here with me now. She is going around and putting the little plugs in the bottom of these uh, extenders just to make the inside uh, watertight. Super easy. Sealed up. Okay, that's the last of the posts. We have them all the way around the perimeter. And as, as I said, you, you see the, they are definitely not level in and out, but I don't really give a shit. It's, it's not gonna matter. So, okay, that's gonna be what we're doing today. Tomorrow, hopefully we get all the fence, the fencing done. I got 300 feet of fencing. The plan is to to kind of center the first 100 foot section here so it wraps around the corners and then the other 100 foot sections that we have should be enough to uh, get to the gate up front. So when I'm totally done the last part will be mounting. I'll have to probably just drill holes through the, uh, the metal gate here. Mount two, I still have more poles left, mount two poles here and just put a piece of fencing over this as well because uh, if there's a crack in your armor the uh, coyote will find it. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I'm gonna make it a part one and part two just so it's not obnoxiously long. Wraps up part one. If you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel. Uh, there are other uh, chicken videos out there. There's quite a few where I document like the various uh, additions and, and technology that I've put into my chicken coop because there is quite a bit. But this is your first time visiting the channel. Please think about subscribing. And if you're gonna subscribe, you can always hit that notify bell, which is over there. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. I'm very much looking forward to getting this project done so I can uh, sleep a little bit better at night. But uh, we'll see how it all turns out together, right? That's all I, ha all I have for you for now. Hope you have a great weekend. Until next time, Duffman out. The projects never end around our household, guys. Never, ever end. It's okay, don't be scared.